Good day chaps. So today's video is going to be on one of the more mysterious designs that was conceived during World War II. It's the A23 heavy cruiser tank. An amalgamation of vehicles that was discussed in the early 40s, notably at the 10th meeting of the tank board, but never appears to have progressed beyond a set of specifications. The A23 itself, in its original form, was to be a cruiser version of the infantry tank Mark IV, the Churchill, and was to use the basic body of the Churchill, although with modifications. The hull, it was stated, would be shorter and the armour reduced. This would make the vehicle lighter overall and, in turn, it was expected that the vehicle would have a top speed of 24 miles per hour and not less than 21 miles per hour. A key caveat in the minutes, though, was that the A23 was to use as many parts as possible from the Churchill, however this would be very much down to satisfactory acceptance of the Mark IV, a feat which would not come to pass, as the early Churchills were some, if not the most, unreliable and faulty vehicles produced, with a life expectancy of just 50 miles. The Churchill hull would remain mostly the same, albeit with less armour and shorter although the hull dimensions are not given, other than it must not exceed 9 foot 5 inches in width, and so quite how much is lopped off is anyone's guess, as at this stage no known pictures or plans are known to have survived, or at least have not yet been found. The armour is however listed, with 75mm on the hull front, down from around 102, while the sides and rear were listed as 50mm, with 17 millimetres over the top and a floor plate between 14 to 17 millimetres. The turret itself is where the main difference occurs. This turret, which was hand cranked, was designed by the Department of Tank Design and would come in two possible configurations. The first was for a six pounder main gun and a basic axle. The second was for triple mounting in the turret. This would include one two pounder main gun and a coaxial 3-inch howitzer in the turret. This would also have a 7.62 anti-aircraft gun and a single 2-inch smoke launcher on the front plate. The number of crew was listed as 5, with two gunners, a loader, and a commander in the turret and fighting basket, and the driver in the hull. What might come as a surprise to some is this same turret designed by the DTD was originally envisioned for the A27 as well. And so what would go on to become the Cromwell Cavalier and Centaur could have originally had the choice of this triple gun mounting. The ammunition stowage was listed as 100 rounds for the 6-pounder, although the specification does not list how many would have been available for the triple turret. 6,000 rounds were kept for machine gun ammunition, as well as two Tommy guns for the crew. The fighting compartment itself was covered, if briefly, with notes mostly focusing on crew comfort, with ventilation of air to prevent fumes from the guns building up, as well as hot and cold air to be circulated to enable the vehicle to fight abroad. The description does become more confusing, however, in the whole layout with regards to the crew positions. It was also stated that the side doors may be optional if the shortening of the hull would prove problematic. The engine was listed as a 12-cylinder water-cooled engine by Vauxhall, and the same as used in the Churchill or improvements thereof. This is quite likely the same Bedford engine as the Churchill, as they themselves are a subsidiary company of Vauxhall's. The gearbox itself is now listed as a 5-speed compared to the 4-speed found on its heavier sibling. The tracks themselves are to remain the same, with all of the above depending again on satisfactory results from the base Churchill. After these minutes, the A23 all but vanishes from the records. It is most likely due to the dismal performance of the early Churchills on whose satisfactory reports such a design hinged, particularly around the suspension and engine. The A27 series would never be built with a triple gun turret, and it's unknown if any of these turrets were made. The last minutes record that the A23 heavy cruiser specifications should be passed to Vauxhalls for a wooden mock-up to be made, and that Vauxhall should continue investigations into the suspension, tracks and bogey wheels, but that no contract would be placed at this time. 
What little of the A23 remains is a curious note in the history of British tank design. At a period where what was needed, and when, was still fairly tumultuous, with ad hoc designs cropping up from time to time, as the parties involved slowly streamlined the desired tank requirements down over the next few years. Well, thank you for listening to this short video. There isn't a great deal to go on, only a few sheets really. But hopefully more will be found one day, and if so, we'll come back to this vehicle. And until then, toodle pip.